Hi guys, uh, so yeah, uh, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about uh, Mariam Abba, So Long A Letter, right? Um, this is the French version, the original, um, and I'm not gonna lie, let me accommodate here a few things. Um, uh, I'm not gonna lie, the, this is completely out of, well, not completely, but it is very far away from my area of expertise. Um, the only, where I can connect with it is be precisely because of the French tradition that uh, Mariam Abba is part of, or is absorbing, rather, right, uh, as a... Uh, an, uh, an author from Senegal, right? So I also uploaded, uh, I think I mentioned it to you, but if, if I didn't, I, I, I mentioned it now. I uploaded a few, uh, a PDF of documents here uh, to Schoology that has uh, kind of like some brief points on uh, Mahema Ba and her uh, long letter. Uh, so key concepts to understand. And then uh, a short biography. Uh, these documents were given to me by uh, Professor Vida, Professor V, uh, from the English department, and uh, and actually Professor Awa uh, lent me her version in the French. Uh, I bought myself the one uh, in English, the one that you guys read. So, uh, again, it is. I am not an Africanist. Uh, I, I am more mostly what is called a hexagonal uh, French scholar, which means that I focus on France as the hexagon, right? Um, but uh, there are, yeah, so in some way, I think what is going to be interesting about my reading of it, uh, or could be interesting for you, rather, is that I am reading it as you, coming from an outsider's perspective, right? So I have a few points. Uh, Alex, I think, is going to give us a longer or, or kind of like more like biographical aspects of uh, Mahayama Abba Sanson. She was, uh, in general, like, well, we could say that she was a, a, a Senegalese writer, right? Uh, born in 1929 and died in 1981, um, and pretty much uh, a writer who uh, showed uh, a lot of the, 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 the conflicts between like the three kind of uh, cultures of Senegal, right? Like, which would be the uh, African culture itself, then the Muslim uh, culture or cultures rather, which we always say it in the plural, and then the French cultures as well, right? Um, so the things that I saw, and I'm sorry, this video is actually going to be shorter than usual because, again, uh, I am also kind of getting into this literature uh, with you as well, or just as you are doing, right? Uh, but I, I think it's always good to have like a uh, outside perspective, like shows us something else, right? So I think I'm just going to like grab a few terms here to explain to what I see as uh, the, the most interesting things, right? At least from my perspective. I find fascinating, and, I, and if you guys read the introduction, I hope you did, it's very short. Uh, the introduction quotes it as well. Uh, what is uh, a fascinating set of uh, words put together at the end. Uh, this is on page, uh, the introduction is page six, and then uh, it's quoting uh, a passage on page 88, right? At the end when uh, uh, our heroine uh, discovers that her uh, daughter is um, is pregnant, right? So after accepting this fact, right, uh, and deciding to uh, uh, this deciding to like go with it and like support her daughter and so on, right? She says, "I took my daughter in my arms. Painfully, I held her uh, tightly with a force multiplied tenfold by a pagan uh, revolt and primitive tenderness, right?" Um, she cried, she choked on sobs. And I think this, this idea of paganism, right, uh, and revolt, right, uh, together with primit primitiveness pr pr and tenderness, these two concepts, sort of, um, notions uh, are kind of a key, in my re reading of the, of the book, are kind of key to, to what hap what's happening in the book, right? Because as also the, intro the, the introduction here by Kenneth uh, Harrow explains, and as you could see in the book, like uh, the book is not only about polygamy and about the conflicts of, of oppression in a, you know, um, uh, phallocentric again, right? Like society in a, in, a, in, a, in a sexist society. The book is a lot also about uh, the conflicts between tradition and modernity, right? Like that is, that is central to this. And when she is uh, saying at the end that this kind of like culmination of the, con uh, of the conflict, the last conflict, right? 
uh, the resolution of it being, you know, taking her daughter in her arms. When she says that, uh, painfully like she did this, she, she held her tightly, right? Uh, but that this force, the force of that hug was multi not multiplied tenfold by pagan revolt, right? Like, what do we mean, like, paganism, right? As kind of the idea of the a non-official religion, right? And like, and part of, it, of, of the book, as you know, is, as you saw, it's this resistance to some uh, traditions within the religion, within, the, within uh, Islam, right? Uh, it's not uh, completely overt, it's not a, like anti-Islamic or anti-religious stance, right? But yet it is some kind of uh, resistant version of it or, or, or some kind of um, a critical, right? Um, a crit critical point of view of the tradition, right? In that sense. And here, another word that is... Um, Important and as I as I mentioned, I just grab a few words, uh, to discuss with you briefly. Is so on page uh, I read the, the French version uh, because, uh, well because it's the original and I could do that, but also because I wanted to compare them. Right. Um, my opinion as first sight is the translation is okayish, but I think it does lose a lot of, uh, things that if you can read French, you can see uh, part of the tradition that Mahima Ba is coming from. So I'll tell you like a very quick example of this. And this goes with my uh, points about pagan revolt and primitive tenderness, right? Uh, when she's talking with this, um, the old uh, uh, guy who wanted to marry with her, right? Like the, the guy who represented kind of like the perfect uh, candidate for marriage uh, and that she rejected and that at the end she re rejects again, right? Uh, Dauda Dieng. Um, she just, you remember, like starts talking politics and a lot of like the oppression of men in, in Senegalese society and the lack of representation, right? And at some point, she, he just answers and tells her in, in English, the translation says, still very critical, uh, Hamatulei. Why this ironical statement and this pro provocative uh, epithet when there are women in the assembly, right? Um, and the, the term in French that... Uh, uh, Ba used was frondeuse. And frondeuse is not only to be critical, but it's to be politically critical, right? Like, so it's a term that if you're reading the French version and French is your language, uh, or, or one of the languages that you understand, you will recognize that. And you will recognize that it's not, she's not only be, being seen as, as critical of, of the system in general, but as a, as a political critic, right? Um, so that's one thing that comes there that is important to, uh, and that I think is part or is linked to this idea of the revolt, right? Like we think of revolts in terms usually of politics, right? A revolt against the system, a revolt against an oppression and so on. And also the paganism as a kind of like criti criticism within, right? Like a religion, like the other side of a religion, right? The pagans are the, those who do not follow, right? Orthodoxy or who are not following like, you know, they are the, op the, the opposite of the Christians, right? In, in, a, in, a, in a Christian universe, right? Uh, well, the pagans will have their own religion, right? Like it's, the, it's, it's, a, it's a antagonistic term. So the fact that she kind of identifies with these two things, like pagan revolt, like, like for herself, right? And then the other one, primitive tenderness, right? Um, and here I want, I want to go also to another uh, funny thing in the translation, right? And this is on page 62, Right when she's uh, at the bottom of page sixty two, um, she's just talking about still this guy uh, Dauda Dieng, right? Uh, comparing him to uh, Modu, Modo and Modu, right? Uh, and then she says, da, da, da. Uh, so just, they're just catching up pretty much, right? And she says like, uh, I went on. It must be all right to the male assembly, right? Like this point of criticizing that is just mostly uh, uh, men there. And then it's, uh, it says, I said it, so you know, it, it's herself, right? Like writing. I said it teasingly, rolling my eyes round. And then the translation says, eternal woman, uh, Colin, um, even in mourning, you want to make a strike, you want to seduce, you want to arouse interest, right? This is kind of like self-criticism uh, that she's giving herself. Now, the translation says eternal woman. The French actually says "éternel féminin," right? Uh, "Éternel féminin" it, it means it doesn't mean eternal woman. It it it, it means eternal feminine, right? As an as an adjective, right? And it is in the European tradition. It is a it's, it's two terms that are very important because they go into this uh, essential essentialization, right? A hypostization of what makes 
the feminine, right? And as I told you, this, this came up uh, before in other readings, right? And it came up especially when we discussed uh, Dr. Faustus, and I told you that in the Goethe version, um, Faust, Faust uh, actually manages to escape at the end. Like there is escape to this, uh, uh, the, 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 the bet that he makes and, and the fact that he loses, right? Like, and he has to like uh, go to hell. There is escape from hell. And in, in Goethe's version at the end, he gets re rescued by what the German uh, calls the, the Ewige Weiblichkeit, which means the eternal feminine, right? So why is this important? For our reading for us, uh, Ba knew this. Like when she said "eternel féminin" instead of uh, "eternel femme," which will be "eternal woman," right? She's pointing to this like notion of like what we conceive as the eternal or the eternal in the sense of like non-changing, right? Universal character of woman, right? And that goes back to that. Uh, uh, in my mind, it goes back to this part where she talks about primitive tenderness as the the side of tradition, right? Like the, uh, that the text is uh, putting or, or in front of the modernity side, right? And of course, this is important for Senegal, right? Because you're talking about a fairly new country, right? Like a country that was colonized by different uh, French powers, the Dutch among uh, them, and then um, finally at the end, the French, right? Uh, so you're talking about like a countries that are like getting their independence uh, late, right? Um, and that are dealing with precisely this, the newness of modernity as uh, the, in the sense of a, a new country, right? Like the new development of who they are, right? Uh, but also a newness that comes from outside. It comes from the, the colonizing, right? The colonizer, right? Uh, and we see it too in other terms that she uses at the end too, when she says, and, and this is already in the conflict of the um, a pregnant uh, uh, daughter, right? And she says, um, she, this is the part when she's also talking about like, so one of her daughters ends up being getting pregnant before marriage, right? And this is seen as a flaw. This is seen as, as, as something not good in society. Uh, and then is the point of like, I need to, you know, educate my other daughters to, to, to and, and children to not do this, right? Um, and then there are a lot of reflections here on knowledge, right? Like the, and and of, if you read, uh, or when you read the, the PDF with the bio that uh, I uploaded there, you're going to see that, and it's kind of obvious from, from the, the, no, the novel, right? But a lot of it, this like hang, hangs from the idea of, you know, women need education. Like part of the criticism here is that women are not educated uh, as men are to uh, have public roles and so on, right? But anyway, on page 76, and this is the other thing I want to come here to, right? We get this kind of like um, reflections on the role of uh, uh, parents and knowledge and children and so on, right? And, and the modernity and tradition, right? And I'm going to read these this two paragraphs really quickly, right? So at the bottom it says, I always tell my children, you are students maintained by your parents. Work hard so as to merit their sacrifices, right? So kind of a traditional idea of like you owe to your parents this, right? Like because they had to do this in order like to sacrifice in order for you to do this, right? Um, which again goes with the story of the country, like trying uh, like the children of the, the parents who fought for independence, right? And then it says, cultivate yourselves instead of protesting, right? Kind of like conservative point as well there, uh, if you think about it. And then when you're adults, if your, opinion are to, if your opinions are to carry weight, they must be based on knowledge backed by diplomas, right? So not only like traditional knowledge or knowledge that you learn by yourself, but that is backed by an institution, right? Again, think about a country that needed to be reinstituted, right? A diploma is not a myth. Again, kind of a criticism of like mythology. It is not everything true, but it crowns knowledge, work. Tomorrow you'll be, you will be able to elect to power any one of your choice, anyone you find suitable, right? It is your choice and not ours that will direct the country. So again, link to the future of this country that is coming to be, right? And then it says, this is the part I wanted to underline my, uh, 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 earlier. Now our society is shaken to its very foundations, torn between the attraction of imported vices right, and the fierce resistance of old virtues. So again, this idea, or like it's almost biological, right? Like the attraction, right? The pull of imported vices, right? So the idea of modernity, what comes from, a, from abroad, they imported, right? It's a vice. It's a moral decrepitude, 
right? Um, so here, the, que the question in like the good things that could come from the, the, from the outside, from modernity, that's put away for a moment, right? Like here is described as vice, right? And then, and the fierce resistance, which is again a very animalistic description, right? The fierce resistance of old, right? The past, virtues, however, right? Tradition, right? Uh, so that's part of the tension that we have here, right? That is very interesting. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I think the, 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 when we go into our uh, uh, oper operative concept for this class, which has been uh, resistance, right? Uh, this novel gives us a lot to think about, like what, what things are resisting what, right? Like another part, uh, for example, that caught my attention is at the end, right? When she's uh, the character talking about, again, uh, educating uh, her older daughters, the younger daughters to like not commit the mistake of uh, that uh, one did before, right? And she's saying on page 92, right? Uh, reflecting on how she did not give like a sexual education to her daughter early on, right? Uh, it says uh, at, the, at the top top of the page almost. I have finally decided to broach the problem of sexual education. I said to your namesake, caught me on a worse. From now on, because that's the one who gets pregnant, right? I will take precautions. I address myself to the trio, the twins being still too young. So the trio of, of, of uh, children she has there. How I had hesitated earlier. I did not want to give my daughters a free hand by offering them immunity in pleasure. The world is upside down. Mothers of your taught chastity, their voice of authority condemned all extramarital wanderings, right? And I underline here this idea of immunity, offering them immunity in pleasure, right? Which again is seen as, uh, after this point of like the world is upside down, as a, as a trait of modernity, right? And again, this was uh, written in 79, uh, but it's coming from uh, not only the, the independence of, of, of um, several countries like Senegal, right, uh, which was in 60, 1960, right? But it's also coming from like the movements of the 60s, of the 60s of liberation, right? And in Europe and in uh, the West, a lot of it was also sexual liberation, right? So this idea of, you know, uh, sexuality is not supposed to just be uh, for procreation, but it's also for like, you know, the individual enjoyment, and especially uh, it's also supposed to be for the female's enjoyment and so on. You also have the development on, of the, the pill, right? So the contraceptive pill, right? So all of these things are like part of this questioning, like how do they fit in this traditional uh, uh, value, so, uh, society with, or with values, right? Which again, Senegal being, as you can see from uh, the diagram there in the PDF, torn between these like, Three, three, three partite traditions, right? Islam, and Islam is a very complex uh, set of traditions as well, right? So the one that is particular to uh, uh, the society and, and which has like points here and there, like polygamy being one. Um, traditional African society, right? Uh, of Senegal at that point, right? And then French culture, right? And then in the introduction here of the PDF, uh, this author, uh, uh, not, not me, not me uh, it was, again, as I said, something that Vida gave me, but it mentioned it like how, you know, all those three traditions do have in some way some sexism, right? Uh, like, which I do agree, uh, but it is also different how it manifests itself, right? Like, as, I, uh, as we know right now uh, from our, the, text, the text we've been reading, uh, France also has been like struggling at this time. Like this is when the second wave of French feminism is showing up, right? So it's one com we're coming from Simone de Beauvoir uh, to into Hélène Sixou very soon, right? Um, so anyway, uh, that's all I wanted to to tell you. This is kind of my impressions, right? There are other notions that are interesting. Another one is eternity of nature, right? The idea of nature being unchangeable in front of the changes of man, right? Uh, which is kind of like a. a, a, a traditional point or view in some way. Uh, two times I found the word resistance. Funny enough, uh, they were referred to men. One was to uh, uh, Modo. I was talking about his, uh, the limits of his resistance to look for another girl, right? So it's kind of like the biological resistance of his like sexual instincts, right? And then uh, the other one is to Modu. And it says, it talks about the resistance that inspire new attempts uh, after each failure. So like the resistance, of the world that would make him like fight more to be successful, right? Um, so those two interesting points there, uh, or interesting instances of resistance. So I'm looking forward to the discussion tomorrow. Again, I'm, I'm kind of like new at this. As I said, I know better 
uh, the French tradition, so I know what uh, probably uh, pr probably Mariam Abba was reading uh, in her French classes, um, as well as what developed later, right? But in terms of, uh, of Africanism, I'm pretty new, so I'm excited to uh, learn about it together with you guys. So I hope you uh, had a good day, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and then, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow in our discussion. Thank you, guys. Ciao.